are with Benjamin Araboff, uh, CEO of Jacob & Co. here in Geneva. And last year, you had shown me kind of under the table a little prototype. Uh, and this year, well, it just came true. So tell us all about this uh, new Astronomia. The Astronomia collection was born in 2016. And I remember when Jacob was telling me about it, I wasn't involved in the business, but I remember when he was telling me about it, he was so happy with the turnout but he wanted to take it to the next level. You know, and oftentimes when he looks at a product, he always thinks about what's next, how could I evolve this even more so. Yeah, because some people could be just satisfied with what they had there. Right, right, right. It's, it's a gift and a curse because like, you want to be satisfied with something that you created that also has never been done before, yeah, but then also it's like you're never happy with it. <laughs> but I think now he's finally happy. It took seven years. <laughs> so uh, when we first when we first did the Astronomia back in 2016, it was turning on its axis in 20 minutes. So it would make a full 360 rotation in 20 minutes, which is cool, mm -hmm. innovative, never been done before. Over the years, we've decreased that time. So we did 20 minutes, then 10 minutes, down to five minutes. And now with seven years of development and the improvement of technology, we were able to do a one minute of movement turning in 360 degrees. But I mean, Gaining those four extra minutes, that was, I mean, real challenge because, I mean, you're talking about different type of forces that you need to uh, manage, I guess. Yeah. So we create, we had to create a, we had to integrate a constant force into the watch um, that helps the movement turn in, 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 in such a speed. Because it's, okay, it's speedy, but it's, it's smooth at the same time. Yeah, and smooth and, and it has to be absolutely accurate. So that was the challenge of it. It couldn't be like... Um, 58 seconds or one minute and one second or two seconds because essentially the movement is the seconds indicator yeah. right and um, we have one one access on the movement which is the ruby arrow that is the seconds indicator and uh, did you have to uh, did you have like kind of weight issues that you need to uh, think about because I mean on the other astronomia you always had like two axes to balance things out and on this one actually you only have three uh, is that was something more complicated to achieve or what was the uh, the idea behind this yeah so in every astronomia the weight was always the concern or the focus like with the f we had four arms uh, each of the arms needed to balance each other out in this one the weight was was even more important where and even so we had to change the design multiple times because we had <clears throat> because we had weight issues so each of the component of that watch is carefully calculated to make sure it's perfectly weighted uh, to work for the movement and it must require quite a lot of energy so at the end how much power reserve do you have with this watch 36 hours okay yeah and uh, well, we have to talk about what you introduced uh, yesterday because that was quite flamboyant. Tell us a bit about this crazy timepiece. Yeah, it's a big show for us. It's a big show for us. We unveiled the Astronomy Revolution. We have the Yellow Billionaire Watch. The Yellow Billionaire Watch, which we called the, 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 the Billionaire Timeless Treasure. And the reason why we call it a Timeless Treasure is because it's a timeless watch. And also, it was a true treasure hunt to find these diamonds all around the world. It's a project that took us three and a half years in development of finding stones. We needed to find about 800 carats, rough, rough carats, rough diamonds, uh, to cut down to about 217 diamonds um, or, or carats of diamonds um, to make this watch. And you have two different types of uh, yellow diamonds, right? Yes, fancy vivid and fancy yellow diamonds. And the idea also was to, what was uh, the reason for this? The reason for the project? No, for the, the, the fact of having these two-tone diamonds. It's, it, it, those type of diamonds are like impossible to find, so we needed, we needed to have a kind of like a degrade um, atmosphere in the watch. Um, yellow diamonds are extremely rare. For, for every 10,000 white diamonds, there's only one yellow diamond that's found. So it made it, you know, it made it even more so difficult um, to do. And uh, in terms of the mechanics, you're still using also a tourbillon, but with also the, I saw that the, the, the bridges have been gem setted, and uh, you have also this uh, really nice uh, green color around it, kind of balances nicely with the yellow. Yeah, the green gives it a nice contrast. The idea was to integrate our expertise in high jewelry and with high watchmaking. There's, I know, two other expensive watches, more expensive watches, 
uh, the Groff for 55 million, I think, and the show part was like 25 million or something. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't have, they didn't integrate complications. They just had kind of like, a, it was like a beautiful high jewelry timepiece. But this is integrating a beautiful flying tourbillon, skeleton movement, and also just remarkable gems combined together. And will this uh, exercise be uh, duplicated? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, we, we don't have plans to duplicate it. And, and I don't think we can. You know, I don't think we can to find these diamonds right now uh, with what's happening with the supply. It would be very difficult. And uh, still in those kind of... Uh exuberant and crazy uh, timepieces uh, expressing the gem setting uh, capabilities that you have. Uh, there's also this uh, twin tourbillon uh, watch. Can you tell us a little bit more about this one? Yes, yeah, so uh, again also the gift and the curse of Jacob when he first saw the billionaire he imagined ha not only having one tourbillon but having two tourbillons <laughs> uh, since it would fit in the same same kind of case and dial. So his idea was to create a double tourbillon billionaire, but change it even further to integrate a leather strap. And actually the leather strap detaches mm -hmm. and you could put on a, a diamond bracelet on it. So that's a, it's a cool touch. Uh, so it's our evolution of the billionaire concept. And talking about evolution, I also just saw a new casino, and this time is this one really has something different from all the pieces that uh, we've seen so far. Uh, tell us a little, also a little bit more. What was the idea of going maybe a little bit more on a subtle way, in a certain way? And I know it's 44, but it feels actually it looks a bit smaller than this. It's crazy. Yeah. So one of our main goals as a as a company, as a business, is to reduce the sizes of our watches to request by our retailers by our customers um, we've done that a lot we've we took our epic x chrono which was 47 millimeter we made it 44 millimeter we have our epic x that's 43 millimeter so we have a lot of collections now that are that reduced in size and one of them is the new casino turbion so we took the We took the idea from the Astronomia Casino, which is one of our best-selling Astronomias, and we reduced the size. We kept the function, and we kept the function of the roulette. We made it in a smaller size, and also we've done something that we've never done before, which which is we put the tourbillon in the back. So you're looking at this beautiful watch. You see this really cool roulette function um, that is just a really cool and fun, you know, function. And then you turn it in the back and you see a, a flying tourbillon. <laughs> yeah. Usually, you, you know, usually we're very proud and loud about our tourbillon. We have it front and center. It's beautiful. It's, it's you know, it's, but, but now we, 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 we took a little bit of a subtle approach. <laughs> okay, so it's for the owner's little uh, pleasure and little secret. Exactly. Initially, we were thinking, okay, maybe we could put the tourbillon right in the center of the watch because there's space, you know, with, and then show the time. Uh, but we decided to, to be a little bit subtle with it and put it in the back. So the focus is the roulette. Okay. So this is kind of a new direction you're heading into? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Well, thank you very much for having us and congratulations on all, on all these uh, timepieces and best to you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks.